I'm Rod Mengel, I'm the parish manager at Gold Coast North Anglican. Um, I'm coming up to two years there. And one of the things I was employed to do was actually open a third op shop. So um, that process took uh, more than 12 months, 18 months probably. Um, and part of that, you know, is we've got a, a vision, you know, we've done the vision and goal and, and all that sort of thing. We, uh, we, that was part of the parish's um, vision 2020 uh, that we incorporated the op shops into. Um, so my background, um, I'm in, uh, I basically uh, have a background of service and hospitality. I'm a chef by trade, ran hotels, motels, um, uh, that sort of thing. And then ended up go, uh, having a maintenance business. I had a maintenance business for 15 years or more, um, a, 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 fa a fairly successful one, um, until I felt the call. Uh, I was a parish administrator in Toowoomba as well. And, um, and that led me to the Gold Coast, felt the, felt the call to, uh, uh, from the Lord to, to follow this um, path. Um, so just walked away from basically from the business that I had and, and do this now. So um, I, I sort of believe that you don't need to know everything. So because um, it's, it's just not possible. So I, I've made a, um, I've made sure that I put, put people around me that can help me and do a lot of the things that I fall down on. So one of the things that we did do um, with Gold Coast North was uh, employ a, an op shop development manager. So Becky, she's, uh, had, she was with um, Vinnie's um, and has opened stores and that sort of thing before. So uh, she's, she's done a lot of that hands-on um, work. Um, and so th that's sort of, and, and that's how our team is built at Gold Coast North, um, that we have other people in places that, you know, could, because you don't need to know everything. Um, and Be uh, one thing with Becky too was that she, she came to us, she saw our vision and what we wanted to do with the op shops, um, because basically the two op shops that we did have were, um, you know, they are the op shops that basically keep the church afloat, <coughs> keep the parish afloat. Um, so she saw the vision that how we wanted to change things and make it more of a social, like try and go down that road of a social enterprise. And um, so she came on board, she actually did the same sort of thing. She took a pay, a pay cut from where she was and came on with us. So. Um, so in the beginning, so the Labrador, uh, Labrador and Oxenford, Oxenford was the first op shop for Gold Coast North uh, and it was sort of opened in one of the smaller um, shops at Oxenford Square over 20 years ago and Labrador was probably about 12 months later that that opened. Uh, it was basically opened by church members, um, you know, it was like 90, probably 95% were parishioners that, that volunteered in the store at the time. Um, and they started those stores by cleaning out their cupboards. Uh, and that's, and they, we've never looked back. We never ever um, don't have enough donations. The donations just keep coming. Um, one, one thing that is important though is creating the right culture from the beginning. Um, so there has been a really uh, a terrific culture of giving at Gold Coast North. So that's just the front of the Oxenford store, and then that's the one on, Labrad oh, on Brisbane Road at Labrador. Um, so when, when you're looking at um, starters, so as I mentioned, I, we, we started planning the third store sort of 18 months ago, started looking for locations, and about Unfortunately for Ed Harry, they went bust about 12 months ago, and um, so about six months ago or more, um, all of the stores, basically, all the fittings in all the stores got um, sold. So we were lucky enough to get the one at the airport, all the contents of that, and the one at Helensvale. So a couple of us got in there, we hired a truck, we went in, stripped out the stores. So basically we got all the shop fittings for, you know, 
$3,000 from two stores. Um, so these are the, uh, these are the things, that you, when you know you're going to go down that track, you, you can sort of put the feelers out and, and watch for. So that was about, we, we worked it out that we got um, something like $30,000 worth of shop fittings. Um, and I think we got a thousand, like 10,000 coat hangers was just in that. So, um, so the, the store that um, we've just opened is the one at Ormo. Um, so these are the, the shop fittings on the walls. This was the night before we opened. Um, the contract was signed on the Wednesday and we were in the store the next Thursday. So. And that was just myself, Becky, and a couple of volunteers. We just got in and, and got all that done. Um, so, so you can just see the quality of the fittings. You know, it makes it doesn't look like an op shop. People were walking past, going, "What's in here?" What, and um, uh, when we were saying, "Oh, it's you know, it's our op shop," they were quite astounded um, with the quality. So part of uh, getting the op shop up and away, so 20 years ago, like I was saying, they just basically cleaned out their wardrobes. I think even the, the contracts on the stores uh, were done by uh, just a few of the parishioners. It wasn't even done by the church. They just signed the contract themselves and, and away it went. Like they, they opened the store, it was all sort of second hand stuff, um, second hand fittings, whatever they could get their hands on and away they went. This one's a little bit different, um, obviously. So we had to write a business plan. Um, the uh, Kelly will have, if anyone wants any of these sorts of things, we're more than happy to share them with you. Um, Kelly, I'll, I'll send all the, co well, she's probably got all the copies. I think I've already sent them to her anyway. So um, it's preparation. We, uh, the one reason we chose Orme is it's the Orme and Pimpama are the first, fastest growing areas in Queensland in population and it's a very, very diverse sort of age demographic, um, lots of families, uh, growing families, um, so it was great for, uh, and there was only one other op shop up there. So it was a, a perfect location when we did all the homework and the studies and feasibility and, and that sort of thing. Um, the other thing that, you know, we've got the volunteer guidelines and uh, the volunteer agreements and the staff handbooks. So th these are the sort of things that you can produce when you've got people who have been in um, op shops or and that sort of thing before, and businesses. Um, so once again, they're all things we're happy to share with everyone. Um, you know, the handbook has all the workplace health and safety sort of stuff in it. Um, and oh, there's a lot of general information. I'll leave them up the front if anyone wants to have a look at them later on. Just on being prepared, when I first started with Gold Coast North, that was one of the storerooms. Um, we called it the dungeon. It's at Oxenford. Um, so prior to Becky coming on board, it was run by Dulcy, and Dulcy was about 80 something. Um, you know, she was, she was a, a absolute, she, she ruled with a, you know, she, <laughs> So, she, you know, she did an awesome job. Uh, she, she'd done it for about 13 years, um, but this was Dulcie's dungeon. And um, I had Michael and Kelly with me one day and I said, come on, I'll take you in the dungeon. And I'm not sure, Kelly just stood there in, shaking her head and Michael had to sit down, Michael Kachera from Workplace Health and Safety, and just look at the place going. So, um, from that, um, the difference that someone who knows, uh, who has been in the industry and that sort of thing, like Becky, she was, we put, uh, she's gone from that to this. So everything's bagged up, the donations come in, they all get sorted, they all get sorted into sizes, types of, you know, so shorts, jeans, 
shirts, dresses, um, shoes, handbags, electrical. Um, so that's still that's the same room. So the, the other thing that we, we found very important was um, branding and social media. Um, we've been uh, we, we use a lot of work for the doll. Um, we actually get paid us like uh, it's only it's like two hundred fifty dollars to to take someone from work for the doll um, for a six month contract. Uh, and the one particular job that I wanted was someone who could work in the office. And so we were very blessed to get Cass. And Cass is, uh, has a degree in social media and marketing and, and that. Just can't find a job. Um, and he's basically created our websites, um, does all our social media posts, does all the um, Instagram, um, so they, they just keep on, uh, he's, he puts them into a thing called Hootsuite and um, they, the posts just keep rolling on. Every day there'll be another post about something. So if, if you're not sure about um, social media and stuff, like there are, if, you, if you have someone like that in your parish, um, try and, and you want to do something like this, it's very uh, beneficial because they do know what they're doing. Before this, I was doing it and, I was, you know, we're pretty hit and miss when you're doing everything else as well. Um, you know, it's not, you're not just looking after one area, you're looking after staff and volunteers and doing workplace health and safety and all that sort of thing. Is he still a volunteer or is he now paying the role? He's still a volunteer. We would love to pay him, but we just haven't got the money. So, um, but in saying that, he's a success, like if we can help him get a job somewhere, um, he'll be one of our success stories because through that work for the doll, we've been able to give him his confidence back. Um, and, you know, I mean, that's the home page for the website. He built this from scratch for us. Uh, you know, takes photo, he takes all the photos of the items that we're selling. Um, you know, he's done all the. You can you can go on that website, the Gold Coast, the uh, Op Shop website, and and basically go. Oh, I'll have a look what's in this store, at oh, the almost store. Oh, what's at Bricker Bay? So it, it's amazing what he's been able to do for us. Um, this is our instant. So we've got an Instagram page as well, and Instagram um, is more for the younger ones. So I suppose that under 35 is. Um, really are big into the Instagram and then Facebook is that older demographic. Um, both great ways of advertising what we have in the stores and what's going on. Work for the doll only gets work for you for six months. What do you do? What does he do for the, the others? What do you do for six months and what does he do? Now the con contracts are ongoing so we'll get someone for six months. Now he may stay on. A lot of the volunteers we've built that relationship with, um, a lot of the store volunteer with, so we've got a lot of uh, uh, volunteers who have gone, they've, they've finished their contract, but they found it so, so good for them, for their own personal, um, you know, it made them, you know, it makes them, Give, give them confidence and all that sort of thing, um, that they stay on. So there was one, one girl, she was uh, volunteering at um, Upper Coomera, we, we put in a, a sort of a pop-up op shop at, at the church at St. Matt's, and um, Crystal, she, she was doing there. So when she first started, she wouldn't say boo, she wouldn't talk to anyone, uh, and now she's basically at Cuomo running the store two or three days a week, so she's managing the store, She's doing the ordering, she's talking to customers, she's counting the money, she's doing the FPOS, she's opening and closing. And so, you know, her life has changed through what, just through work for the doll. So, yeah. Just more around. So staffing and volunteers. So work for the doll I just spoke about. So that's Becky on the right hand side. 
Um, and then we've got Kay. Kay does, uh, she's paid for 10 hours um, at Labrador, um, but does like 40 odd. She shouldn't, but she loves it. Um, and then the other lady is just, uh, just uh, one of the volunteers. So that's in back in the, s the sorting room. And once again, the three people there all work for the doll with Becky in the middle. It's not all fun. <laughs> so you do have, you know, you, you meet great people and, you know, uh, we, we, we give out food hampers and, and do, all, do all that sort of thing as well. If people come into the store we, we'll, and they don't have a shirt, we'll gladly put it, you know, give them some shirts. If they don't have shoes, we give them shoes. Um, but, you know, then people are still out there that do this sort of thing and all you can do is pray for them, really. Um, yeah, they just, it, it's a fairly ongoing thing, unfortunately. A, a lot of good stock is ruined because uh, people get into it and make a mess of it. Usually it's, you know, it rains that night or something. Um, can be, can be pretty awful. So, you know, there's, uh, if you're considering a, an op shop um, for your church, then it's not all, you know, all the fun stuff and yeah. been able to talk to people. There is a, there is a lot of work that goes in, into um, the day-to-day -day running. Uh, who, who here has got an op shop at their churches? Okay, three, yeah. And do you get much of that? No, no. we don't have a bid. Okay, all so they don't? All our donations are straight to the shop. Okay, yeah. And that's what we um, try and recommend people. In fact, there is a sign on that bin that says, please bring it in store. Uh, where am I up to? I'm just about done, I think. So this, this one is, um, uh, we've got security cameras at Labrador because Labrador were having real issues with um, people breaking in, people breaking into the shed. We had a little garden shed there. We got the bin there, um, so we, we went and put in uh, security cameras and this one particular Sunday um, my phone went ping and uh, it was the camera being alerted that someone was, someone was there. So I looked on the camera and I could see a bike there and I said to Peter, because um, we had to go out, up, out to Upper Coomera, We'll just duck around to Labrador and, and we'll grab that bike and put it in behind the gate. And unfortunately, how do you get it to play? How do you get it to play? There it goes. So at this stage, we didn't have, we, we've got Perspex on that gate now. Um, there was a guy in there trying to break into the uh, back door. And I've just gone in and seen red that someone was trying to break into the store. So I've, I'm up him like a, you need to get out. Poor old Peter, he's, he's about to uh, um, wet himself, I think. He, he was pretty, anyway, this, I should have, at that stage, I should have just let him walk past. <coughs> Instead, I went, and what's in your bag? <laughs> to which he went, wow, you want to see what's in my bag? Um, so he stood there for a little bit before we got him to move on. Um, he came back an hour later and jumped the fence and grabbed what he wanted to grab. Uh, but he's also having a holiday with Her Majesty now, so... That, that's just those, that side of an op shop that, you know, don't, don't go into an op shop thinking it's all wonderful. It can be really, really hard work, but there are the benefits of it as well. We've got room, there he goes. Um, 
Yeah, should have. Still trying to get in to go. Come on. Anyway, a few people had a, had a bit of a chuckle about that. Um, poor old Peter, I think it took him about three hours to, for him to stop shaking. So, but this, see, the, Labrador is an older store. It's been there for a long time, and there was lots of changes that we had to do with Labrador and with Oxenford to sort of, um, you know, the bring, bring it up to the workplace health and safety sort of standards. You know, we had uh, volunteers that weren't using gloves when they were sorting, um, you know, and, and some of those donations, they contain dirty nappies, dirty all sorts of things. They contain used syringes and, so, you know, anyone that sort of says anything about workplace health and safety with an op shop, you really do need to keep on top of it. Um, so, are there any other questions or anything else you'd like? I, I know I've sort of run over, um, but I'm, I'm happy to talk with anyone about anything later on. You're more than welcome to have a look at uh, any of the op shop stuff. Are you happy for a uh, group of people to come and visit? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We have we have three op shops. We've got two on oh, two yeah, on. Mad. <laughs> we inherited one. Yeah. But um, at Stradbroke, it really is the only shop in town, mm -hmm. and it's got good volunteer support because again, yep. our parishioners. The lady that was looking after this in her 80s or 90s, and uh, it would be interesting to hear how to develop them because yep. we have the same sort of issues and space and how to present and, and things like that. Yeah, well, the, the biggest thing is like Gold Coast North is so reliant on the money, mm. um, and that's one of those things too that we want to try and wean off the op shop so we can use it for. You know the the big vision stuff, the you know counselling services and and food hamper services and and all those other things that we sh we should be doing. Um, but yeah, happy happy for you to come down and visit the the new one at Ormo. Um, yeah, Be Becky, I'd love love to see any of you to come and chat in the stores and and have a look around. Um, I mean, we're not perfect by any means, and we're still going. Like you know, we've got 20 years of catching up to do with Oxenford and and Labrador. So, when you say that the that uh, Gold Coast North is reliant on the op shops, to what extent is it reliant on the op shops? Lots. Like, so, uh, <laughs> like free swage, but yep. what other wages or other things does that happen? Um. Yes. <laughs> um, it, it, no, well, it, it is it well and truly reliant on uh, helping pay for the wages and that sort of thing. Um, because the other thing we're doing too is we've got uh, we're doing a church plant at Ormo, so the money that is from Ormo is sort of going into that and helping with uh, Chris Johnson's wage and 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 that sort of thing. So, yeah, uh, it's it. Uh, we, we have to, you have to keep an, so much money to, to reinvest in the op shops and keep them running well. Um, and of course, we've got Becky as well now, so her wage comes out of the op shop. Uh, but, you know, the growth that she has and, you know, the changes um, that she's been able to help in, implement, um, you know, is you sort of can't put a value on that. Um, yeah, you just, yeah. It sounds like great ministry, playing for wages still, but you know, it's great ministry for the people that come into volunteers, so yep. it's a big gospel win. Right? It is, yeah. And you've got to think too that the op shops now, like when they first started, it was probably 90% parishioners, 10% just general public volunteering. But now it's probably the other way around. It's 90% you know, just people like work for the doll, people who want to just volunteer, uh, people who are, you know, people who are lonely, uh, they'll come in and help volunteer and that you've got 10% who are parishioners. So um, this is where the almost store is going to, with Chris Johnson being there, 
Uh, he's actually going to have a room. Um, we haven't decided the name of it yet, uh, whether it's the Hope HQ or Hope Centre or something like that. But he, he will be, we plan on having that ministry operating out of that room. Um, you know, if people come in and or they want to make an appointment and see Chris or, or someone else, uh, that they'll be able to do that. And then we want to take that back into the other, op into the other stores as well that we've got that space um, that is just for, you know, spreading the gospel, having, you know, even if it's two chairs and a Bible and, and some other books or whatever to make someone a cup of coffee and, and sit down and have a chat with them and talk to them. Um, it's more than we've got now. So, yeah. We've got a small book shop at Burma and yes, it, it pays by the way, you know, it, it's a very necessary Yep. Yeah, and I think that's what we've got to get back to because op shops are a dime a dozen now. Like they're everywhere. At at Oxenford, we're one of seven op shops yeah, there. We're at one of four. You know, we're so one of we've got to make ourselves diff like we've got to be different because you don't get that in a lifeline or even a Vinnie's or or whatever. You know, so if we can have that space where people can feel comfortable to come in and talk and you know they want to go further and maybe see a one of the clergy or one of the deacons, then from there we can make an appointment and, and go that way or, you know, further on down the track if, you know, counselling services or, or whatever. But um, that's, you know, that, that's the, what we need to keep our focus on and not just, OK, well, it's made another 500 bucks today or, or whatever, you know, it's, yeah, so.